Hey, we are here today on this beautiful Sunday um, with Donovan throwing rocks and um, hiding his hands. Sadiq, also a big um, thank you to um, Marcus Guyton, who is helping to spread the message. Um, so I want to say hello to those on Facebook, those on all the podcasts. We have Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbeam. Um, and eventually, we'll be on YouTube. So hello to you guys on YouTube. And again, to Facebook, if this feed kind of goes out a little bit, just stay tuned. It will come back. We got a lot of things going on here. So a lot of times, it'll uh, blink out. And so don't go away. It'll come back, and I'll continue to talk and kind of refresh my points when it comes back. But hopefully, we'll continue to go strong. And so... Hopefully you guys can see the topic at hand. It's called The Conversation Continues, which is a play on The Marathon Continues. I don't know if you guys caught that. Um, we're going to continue to talk about Nipsey Hussle. I have some specific points that I do want to cover. And so um, hopefully you guys will um, have some things you want to cover as well. And so we'll go ahead and get started. I'd just like to also say the date. It is um, April 14th. 2019 at three o'clock uh, specific uh, specific <laughs> Pacific standard time. Okay, and so Donovan, what's going on with you? Same old, same old. Just a dollar trying to make a donut. Is that all you trying That's to make? That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. But uh, what's going on with me? I, I put in a solar uh, gable attic fan. If you guys want to do re a, re a reduction by one to three percent of your attic in your roof, that will help your AC and that will reduce your your bill. Got it, Mr. I, Handyman and I, Donovan. And I went solar. So, yeah, you're going to pay more money on the front end, but on the back end... You're not doing your job. You, on the back end, you, you will uh, save a lot of money. <laughs> Donovan's not doing his job. He forgot to tell me I didn't have my microphone on. Yeah, and so, so, anyway, uh, Marcus has also included the link for you guys, for whatever reason, if you're not friends with me, for you guys to um, participate in the conversation, go ahead and click the link, and I'm assuming that'll make you able to do so. All right, so let me go ahead and get started. For the sake of time, the purpose of the Demetra Case Show is to promote uh, black love, knowledge, and understanding of the things that go on in our community to make us an even better people. Okay, and so the topic at hand is the conversation continues in regards to Nipsey Hussle, um, we're also going to be talking about well, um, the message to the black man. So I'm going to try to tie this all together, okay? So on last Thursday, April 11th, Nipsey Hussle's homegoing service was held at the Staples Center and broadcasted, if that's even a word, for the world to see, okay? Many people from all walks of life um, attended the emotional and uplifting service, in addition, many people got a chance to speak about the life and legacy of Nipsey Hussle. The majority of people that spoke about him ended their speech with the signature words of the marathon continues, which is what his, his brand and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, basically saying even though he's gone, the, the mission, the marathon will go on. Okay. And I'm going to do my part to make sure um, that happens as much as I can. Okay. But we'll get into that. Now, a couple of weeks ago, T.I. was on Instagram Live talking about the death of Nipsey. A viewer asked T.I. to name a book that Nipsey recommended um, for him to read. And T.I. said that Nipsey suggested he read Message to the Black Man in America by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All right. Now, Message to the Black Man is considered to be one of the most prolific blueprints for black America to follow. Reader's Digest called the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the most powerful man in America, okay? Now, this was in 1965. Now, Cosmopolitan Magazine said that Muhammad gives his followers the ineffable sense of being, sense of power that binds them together. On page 222 of the message to the black man, the following is written. Now, keeping in mind, like I said, this was written in 1965 or published anyway in 1965. Okay, so here are some excerpts from the book. So, you say that we cannot unite and produce our own necessities. We are 22 million or more people depending on the white American citizens to produce food, clothes, shelter, transportation, and employment um, of our or, or educational training. Now, if they, white America, d uh, do not share equally with us, we charge them with discriminating. Some of us will go to the extreme of disgracing ourselves and trying to force the white American citizens to give equal respect. 
the love of self and self-respect along with the will to do something for self if given a chance will get you the respect of all civilized nations okay it is a shame and disgrace to the intelligence of any people to lie at the feet and doorsteps of another nation asking and praying to be cared for love and unity of self and uh, and kind is the key to our salvation if you say we cannot you are wrong we can unite okay now this is some more i, I kind of just went through because i've read it and so i, I kind of like read it every once in a while just to kind of you know uh, refresh my memory of some things and so here are just a few more excerpts from the book we what we must understand today is the importance of acquiring that land of our own american what america sorry was not established and chartered with constitutional guarantees for the black man but for the white man in what other country on earth will you find 22 million people with the framework of another people's government seeking to become qualified citizens joyously singing the song of integration our people are the fools of the nation integration means self-destruction and the means to this is end is exactly that death and nothing less we do not look what do we look like trying to integrate with 400 year old enemies the average so-called negro wants to change his own flesh and color for the blood I'm sorry, his own flesh, color, and blood for strange blood and flesh. Now, of course, that's not all there is to the book. But I wanted to illustrate um, that I understood what Nipsey's, why Nipsey, I'm sorry, suggested T.I. read the message to the black man. Okay? Now, Nipsey was doing many things for his people to help us unite. Angela Rye posted a graph, and actually Sydney, I don't uh, know if he's on here, he actually shared it with me, and it was a graph that Angela Rye posted um, that illustrated all the things that he was doing. It estimated, it is estimated rather, that his ventures totaled over $200 million and hired and impacted at least 40,000 people not related to the music industry. Now, We've heard all about um, the business ventures he had from clothing stores to a fish market. On a larger scale, he co-founded a STEM Academy, reopened um, World on Wheels, which is huge because anybody who's been to um, World on Wheels in Los Angeles, that was the place to go. When I was a kid in the 80s, we would go to World on Wheels, not necessarily to skate, but we went. Okay, so um, it was damaged in the um, 1992 um, LA riots, and so he um, reopened it up and all that other stuff. Um, he started um, Our Opportunity, a coalition dedicated to developing properties and revamping neighborhoods across multiple cities, created uh, cryptocurrency apps, and the list goes on and on. Now, in closing, Nipsey was following the blueprint that was set forth by many that came before him, including the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So the question I have is, what are we going to do to continue building the late, great Nipsey Hussle's um, legacy and what he started? So let me go ahead and get you guys' questions. And also, I want to talk about something, because I watched a whole um, service uh, on Thursday. You and must I, have been really bored with your time. No, I actually wasn't bored. I was working. Okay, gotcha. But, you know, I yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. so. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Sorry. I, forgot. Um, so I like the multitask. So I watched the whole thing, and so I took a lot of things away from the service. But one of them um, really stuck out to me, and I'll cover that. And that's in regards to uh, Nipsey's parents and their dynamics. And so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So I want to get to you guys' comments. Okay, so Tay says, hey, hey, what's hey, happening? Hey, Tay. Um, and then Marcus says, pin that um, link to comment so it'll be um, there every time. Okay, got it. See, this is the kind of stuff here that I'm still learning. Let's see, pin. Learn as you go. Bam. All right, I got you. All right, and so let's see. Uh, thank you. And uh, Ricky uh, says, hey, D, how are you, Ricky? And James says, integration was nothing but infiltration. Mm. The beginning of the end of black unity. A fight that I'm sure warrants um, think tanks yearly on how to keep us in the back seat. Absolutely. I mean, we are now, if you go on YouTube, you can find a whole host of things that talk about um, the strategies they took to keep us where we are. One of them, I recommended a movie to my brother who is now trying to wake up, which I'm glad, <laughs> um, was uh, the secret selling of the uh, to the Negro market or something like that, mm -hmm. um, where they had this, and I'm sure it came out of a think tank, 
um, the strategy to get back at the time was $15 billion that we were strong in the 19, 1954 is what it was. Mm -hmm. We had $15 billion, which is a lot of money back then. And they said to themselves, the narrator, the white guy, was saying, you know, they have a lot of money in their community and we need to figure out a way. I they like it. the stuff we like too mm -hmm. and let's do this and let's do that. So they went about... The, even, Formulating. Even, yeah, but even in 1954, we're still segregated, but they're like, that money don't need to be mm -hmm. segregated, right. though. And so um, we've just kind of been on the hook ever since, especially when it comes to our money. All right. And hey, Gina, what's happening? Thank you for my hair. It kind of shrunk. And yesterday was what we call wash day. Wash day. It's not mm, country wash, wash. day. Um, you put so, in the zinc? Did I put no? I didn't put no zinc in it. No, no. Did you put? Oh, put the in, the zinc, in the zinc. And I arranged it. And <laughs> right. I, I arranged my hair out. Yeah. While drinking some orange. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you though. Thank you. And uh, let's see. And Al says, I see you got flowers uh, for your birthday uh, on my shirt. Um, oh, that's right. It was Dee's birthday yesterday, everybody. You are now twenty eight. Eight. Twenty-eight. Yes. Right. right on. Right on. Twenty-eight. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah. Uh, Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes. So anyway, um, like I said, I wanted to continue talking about this because this is my fear, you guys. My fear is this, is that we're going to forget about it like we forget about a lot of stuff that happens in our community. You know what I mean? Like, Nipsey wasn't perfect, and a lot of people didn't know anything about him at all up until he, the time that he died, and people start to learn a lot about him. But the fact that we know so much about him and what he was doing to revolutionize or to change it to help black people, his people, those things should never be forgotten. And as I said, we we tend to forget about those things. We, for, we, we like, have a habit of getting all hyped up or upset or whatever the case is about things that go on in our community and then we go on to the next thing like i'll give you guys thing. an example and thank you so much steve um like this is kind of where i start to see the conversation go about nipsey and it makes me mad and honestly it does i'm, I, gonna, I'm gonna say what i had to say okay and you know what <laughs> i wasn't talking about oh, you but since you brought it up <laughs> okay. You know, like, people want to start talking about him and Lauren not being married. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, you know, she should have secured the bag. And that's, her, you know, she's stupid and all. Like, why didn't they get married? And I'm like, you know what? For one thing, nobody knows but them why they didn't get married. And why is that our business? We're not going to benefit from any of his wills or any of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, is that where we're going to take it now? Are we going to take it now to what was going on in the dynamics of the relationship in the bedroom? And then the, I've seen somebody bring up the baby mama. Do, do, you, do, do you think that the bastardization of black children is a problem or do you think it's no big deal? Well, the, see, this is my thing, too. Where did the term ma marriage come from? I mean, is marriage... I get it because it has a whole lot of legal ramifications, mm -hmm. but was he a bastard? I mean, his mom and dad were together. Maybe they didn't as ascribe to what everybody else ascribed to as far as marriages go. Like, we don't know what their situation was in their relationship, why they weren't married. But to me, I'm in fear that that kind of stuff is going to overshadow what mm -hmm. he was trying to do because, unfortunately, in our community, we get wrapped up into the salaciousness mm -hmm. of what everybody's doing. Ooh, well, you know, his baby mama wasn't involved. Like, I've seen people post this. I'm like, what? Come on. Is that where we're going to go, like, to the gutter? Do you really care why his baby mama wasn't involved? They, they, like, they had the reasons. Well, well, uh, isn't that the same as Nene Leakes not wanting people to go into her closet? I mean, I don't want to be in Nene's closet. <laughs> but, but as I'm saying, we like to be entertained. Yeah, but like it's like, well, so I, not even that I'm trying to bring it up, because I don't, to me, it's neither here or there why they didn't get married. He obviously loved her, and they had their thing, and it's not our business. But let's not let that kind of stuff overshadow his work. His work. Like, we need to stop doing the garbage gutter stuff in our community of, like, trying to get in the dirt. Like, the Wendy Williams, you know, uh, just tabloid inquirer, and I'm dating myself, magazine type of stuff. Like, that is such low-hanging fruit. Do we really care that much? I mean, and if we really care about the well-being of Lauren London and the kids, Reggie Bush started to go fund me. <laughs> he did and not that I don't even think they need it but he started to go fund me for them and donated ten thousand dollars off the rip himself and so if you're concerned of the state of uh, Nipsey and Lauren's children 
then go to the GoFundMe okay. and donate. Okay, let, let me ask you this. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I like you do me. <laughs> you want your lunch date? Yes, I want my lunch date. Now check this out. If he's making so much money and it, and it's factual that he did he did a lot in the community, why does he need a GoFundMe? Who said he? Who says he needs a GoFundMe? Maybe right. that's something Reggie is doing on his own. It doesn't sound like. I mean, come on. The man has money. No, no, Lauren has I, money. I'm, I'm not doubting yeah. that. But the, Maybe but, he just but, felt like it was the right thing to do. Their father is not going to be here mm -hmm. to, you know, do but, whatever. But, but why do a GoFundMe? And you have to ask Reggie for that. Mm -hmm. Because right, obviously Nipsey didn't ask him to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, gotcha. I mean, maybe it's just a, a, a show of um, love. I don't know. Just like most time when people die, they, you know, people give cards with money and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know what Reggie's reasoning is. And then Ricky says, you're right about everything. Also, your hair looks pretty like chocolate sugar flowers. <laughs> 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 oh, Ricky, thank you so much. <laughs> and Marcus says... I am just curious to see where the co commitment to his legacy and sacrifice is at in just 90 days from now. You know what, Marcus? The, the, screw the 90 days. How about nine days from now? Mm -hmm. I'm willing to even say nine days because it's just unfortunate in our community. We, like, things disappear. Mm -hmm. and, and it has, like, a shelf life with us. You know what I mean? But something like this, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, we're still talking about Nipsey. We're going to continue to talk about Nipsey. Because as far as I'm concerned, some people will probably disagree with me. I classify him with your Marcus Garvey's, with your um, Elijah Muhammad's, your Malcolm X's, your Martin Luther King's. I, I, I categorize him with those people simply because he was following the blueprint, like to the T. He didn't, you know, go off for himself. He was trying to uplift his people because he saw where we were going. So yeah, a, a lot of people in, in the messages and comments were saying that, uh, and I was reading on you know uh, during the funeral and stuff like that. Um, you know, he was stupid to stay in the neighborhood, and you know, you're supposed to when you make it, you're supposed to get out, and you're not supposed to stay. What what, what is your thoughts on that? I, I just I feel like that's a personal decision. I mean, if somebody was going to get him, I think they were probably going to do that wherever he was, mm -hmm. but. You know, he stayed in a neighborhood, a building and uplifting the neighborhood. You know, it wasn't like he was just hanging out. He was like working. And so, I I mean, if I had the type of money Nipsey had and I was in the neighborhood, I would probably stay too. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. It's like, and it sounds like he stayed because he loved his people. He loved this neighborhood and the city. So that's why he stayed. So, so let me ask you this, devil's advocate. If you're a successful person, actress, uh, doctor lawyer, whatever, and you come from 5th Ward, Houston, let's mm -hmm. say, or ninth Ward, Louisiana, somewhere, which doesn't exist anymore because of the, the, the flood. Uh, so you're saying just go ahead and stay and make your community Why? better? Why not? Does money and a title make you better than your people? Well, you see them running around with Mercedes and all this Nikes and all that other but stuff. But does that make you better, though? Why not stay and fix the Well, oh, I got Jordan, so it obviously makes me a better I mean, basketball player. I mean, hell, you could be in Beverly Hills and be stuck up or, well, or somebody stick you up for your, for your car or your again, money. I, I will give my kids four hundred dollar Jordans because it's going to make them better better basketball players. Well, that's we know that's not true though. That's <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, but so when you move out of the neighbor, I mean, you you become something. Yeah, the only thing is different is, is money and a title, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Lavinia, the Lavinia, what's happening? Yeah. You said it does not matter whether they were married or not. Yeah, I agree with that. It's like why do we? Why are we going there? Because I've seen people on YouTube, especially trying to make a conversation mm -hmm. about. Lauren and she's being stupid, not securing bag, and it's like, well, and then this is probably coming, and then some chick was talking about how she's um slept around. I'm like, really? Like this man, this woman, man has lost his life being a soldier on the front line, and y'all want to try to tear this woman down? That doesn't matter. But again, I personally, this is Donovan speaking. I would. We have a problem in our community where 70% of our black women are not married versus white people. You flip it, it's, it's almost the exact opposite. And I'm not saying that they had to get married. That ain't what we're saying. But the thing is, if you're going to be, this is the love of your life. And, and I, I say this to all young people all the time when I meet them. If, you, if it doesn't work out, they have a thing called divorce. Maybe some people, like, again, mm -hmm. don't, doesn't, they don't ascribe to that system mm -hmm. of being married. There's people who've been together for 30, 40 years and have never right. been but, married. But here's the sad thing. This man is dead now, right? Yeah. This woman cannot make any decisions when it comes to his body. Oh, well, I mean, maybe she had... I don't, you don't know what they had written up. See, that was not, it doesn't matter. Legally, it doesn't matter. Because it does not. It, <laughs> hold on <Yes>. a second. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but go ahead, go ahead. Get, get your point. You know, me, uh, the point that I'm making is like we are voyeuristic now. We are mm -hmm. trying to get inside of what these people might or might not been doing. And I guess mm -hmm. it makes for good discussion or yeah. gossip. But you don't know what they had legally written up, with last will and testament. It you know, we don't know. We have no idea. Like I had a good friend die last year. And he let his brother, which was not his next mm -hmm. of kin, do all of his medical directives and stuff. You know, and so he was able to call the shots, even though he wasn't the next of kin. Living but, well. Yeah, he would have yeah, so, well. Yeah, so, but we don't know what they had going on. But, to you know, to run her low after all she's gone through in the last two weeks, I just think that's very shitty yeah. for people to do. And then, let's see, uh, Marcus says, I think all too often many who know better... Allow those who want to move on to simply move on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to change the conversation and not allow it to be uh, to change back. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I made a vow on my page. Let me get the rest of you guys' comments on my personal page because I don't really do with Facebook. And I made this statement because I'm not one of those people like, I'm getting ready to delete people. Mm -hmm. I just basically said, from now on, People who are uh, anti-black unity, I will be deleting them. I'm going to dissociate myself from that because that is against what we're trying to do. So we're not going to have this Demetrius K show anymore? Well, you, you probably <laughs> won't be on it. I'm just saying. But we can't say that we're for black unity and associate with people who are not. True. We have a lot of provocateurs, if you will, who are doing it for the likes and the and the comments mm -hmm. and the views or whatever the case is. But they're not really interested in black unity. They're only interested in the attention. And so you can say water is wet. And they'll say, well, no, it's not because, you know, I've proven it scientifically in the pseudoscience. And, mm -hmm. and it's just, just like um, muddying the waters. Like black people don't need any more muddy waters. Right. We need the water to start to get clear. And we have these uh, agents and these uh, just, de just detractors from what we need to do, constantly throwing mud in the water. We need to get rid of those, not get rid of those people, but at least just uh, associate from them for now until they get their stuff together. And Al says, didn't I say the same thing the other day? And what was that? Because I ran my mouth. And um, Ricky, you say, when he wasn't in that interview, when he was in that interview, he said, if they kill me, ride for me. I knew something was going to happen. Mm. I cannot describe the silence that um, whiffed through the house. I was scared as I, let's see. Oops. I was scared as I had ever been. Um, yeah, and I saw that interview as well. Because um, somebody had made the comment about that they might do something to you in regards to him making a Dr. Sabi um, mm -hmm. documentary. And that's when he said, well, if they, something happens to me, you guys better ride for me. Right. And so maybe he knew, you know, he was, you know, because there's a lot of conspiracy theories going on around, going around that he was killed due to the Dr. Sabi thing and a whole host of things. Maybe he was set up. And so, yeah, I mean, maybe he knew something we didn't, you know, and on um, the Breakfast Club interview, uh, Charlemagne asked him about it. Um, why did they, he believe, he being Nipsey, believed that uh, Dr. Sabi was murdered. And he says, well, why did they murder all holistic doctors? You know, there's mm -hmm. been a lot of them come up mm -hmm. murdered. Exactly. So he says, you know, you're stopping their money. So they don't want you to do that. If you heal people, then there's no yeah, need there's to go no... to the doctor, exactly. right? Exactly. It's followed a bouncing ball. And Lavinia, you said the people who object to their living arrangement need to mind their own business. Like, Absolutely. You know what, Lavinia? The crazy part about these people who are all up in their business probably got a whole host of baby daddies <laughs> and mamas that they ain't even with. And um, ain't married not one of them. Okay, look. I, I, I told you about that in faith. I wasn't talking about okay. you, okay? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, Lavinia? Jesus Guilty spirit. Yes. The one that rock is thrown into the crowd, the one that hollers is the one that got hit. hit. Mm -hmm. So sorry. Right, Didn't yeah. mean to hit you. Right, gotcha. So yeah, so uh, we need to stay away from that kind of conversation. I know that some people will do it, and like I said, I just made it a personal thing for me. Uh as I you know, you guys know I turned 48 yesterday. <laughs> I turned 48 yesterday, and so but the day before that did a lot of reflecting. And I said to myself, okay, D. You don't want to go another year staying on the same level. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you want to take it up right. a notch. You're 48. You want to really just get out there and kick ass. And so I had to also ask, well, how am I going to do that? I got to personally get rid of a lot of distractions. And one of those things are when I go on Facebook, I don't want to see, and it's just my personal decision, I don't mm -hmm. want to see a lot of things that are harming us um, as black people, especially, you know, on the Internet, 
A lot of times people believe any and everything. Yes. If you write it up just nice and you say it the right way, it sounds very plausible. Well, Abraham Lincoln always said uh, anything on the internet is true. It must be true. If it's on the internet, it must be true, right? <laughs> Abraham so, Lincoln said that, 1865. Right. And so we need to get rid of, you know, that, that I call it like a cancer. Those people are not interested in uh, continuing the conversation or even continuing the marathon. If you want to go there, they're not interested in that. They're just personally interested in um, elevating themselves to what I don't know. And the crazy part is they have a lot of people who follow them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just not going to be one of them. And James, he said, that's right. Everybody ain't going to make it. Time to move away from people just running their mouth and um, detracting others from moving forward. And yes, kick ass. Happy belated. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, we got to we all need to be kicking ass. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't talking. Sometimes you do got to kick a little ass physically. Literally. Yes, yeah, but literally. I'm saying like in life, we got to start kicking ass, you know, in order to get where we got to go. Not even just personally, but to help our people because, you know, we talk about this a lot. We are like bad off. I don't even know if bad off is it's like this is the strongest word I can think of right now, but we are bad off and we don't need to be. And so... When I read uh, the the passages from uh, the message to the black man, that was written in 1965. Back then, we were 22 million people. Now we are 42 million plus people, um, and we're still in the same situation, sort of, kinda. You know, mm -hmm. well, not even sort of, kinda. We are. We're still begging for uh, acceptance from the oppressor, trying to fit in and praying. That's the whole thing that he talked about. Like, why are we still doing those things? You know. And let's see, Gloria, what's happening? Says, I think Nipsey Hussle should be the bar by which many men measure themselves by. He never enjoyed the success of Jay-Z or a Drake, but yet he was still able to move like a boss um, based on his ability to learn new things and study. He made lemonade out of lemons he had and was able to sell them on his own corners without leaving his own hood behind. Yes, and so I'm glad you said that because to, you know, Donovan's question, a lot of people say, well, why didn't he leave? Why am I going to leave? These are my people. This is what, you know, this is what, and I know I think I missed one of, um, I think I did. Yes, um, Al's comments because he's going to be mad at me. <laughs> but, you know, he did those things. He had a lot of adversity. If you guys watched the funeral, his brother talked about the struggle that they went through to keep the shop that they had. Said they had an eviction notice and they were going to get kicked out. The police came and, and somehow they got offered the opportunity to buy the shop um, uh, where they were operating out of. And he said they did everything they could. Him and his brother, and I guess the business partner at the time who was now deceased, he was murdered as well. Mm. Um, did everything they could to get the money to buy the shop and they did. And the rest is history. So, I mean, at some point in time, we have to stop making excuses. You know, stop saying we need to leave the neighborhood. What are you going to leave the neighborhood and do? Go be among people who don't want to be among you? I mean, what, what are you going to do, you know? And then, Al, I did skip your comment, but I went back to it. You said, wasn't Omarosa in the same situation when Michael Clark Duncan passed? Um, It sounds like mm -hmm. she was. Yeah, she was a fiancé. Yeah. The they hadn't gotten she married was, yet. Yeah, she was the, they hadn't gotten married yet, so maybe there was a little something to that. Like, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's situation is different. We don't know what their situation is. Lauren hasn't complained about it. I guess we're all waiting for TMZ to come out and say, oh, you know, she was cut out of the wheel. Or, mm -hmm. You know, like, like we're looking for that kind of stuff. So we can say, mm -hmm, we told you she was stupid, girl. She should have secured the bag. He didn't really love her. Because so that, that's what we really want to go with this. You know, he didn't really love her. That's just sick. And so, let's see. Uh, and Alice says... People have the same temerity to criticize because I don't, because uh, they don't know Nipsey's music, but their kids have all, uh, all have Jordan shoes and never saw him play basketball. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I don't have a problem with you having Jordans, but I do have a problem with you having Jordans if your other stuff is not together. I don't want you to ever have your kids and you have on Jordans and then you come ask me for money. You know, that's when I'm going to have a problem or you have these things and then God forbid somebody does die. You don't have life insurance. That's when I'm going to, you know, raise my eyebrow. But I mean, just because you have Jordans on me, you don't have your stuff together. But, you know, we know a lot of times the contrary is true. And so Marcus says, 
No, queen, we are beyond bad off. See, I was trying to be nice. He says, um, we are scraping the bottle of the barrel for scrapes and trying to act like we are still eating steak. We have reached a place where we fear the responsibility of helping ourselves. Yes, you know, and I think it's fear, and I just think we really don't know how to help ourselves. We've been so dependent um, for a long time, and not always, because like I said, um, my brother, who was um, like enlightening himself, if you will, he told me, because I was watching um, a lot of documentaries and stuff on Black Wall Street, and he was just blown away by that. And I said, see, because, you know, not to throw him out there, but he's one of those people that have the ideology of, oh, we just need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Black people are always complaining. But when he starts to see those type of things, he's like, oh. So there is a little bit more to it than us just being lazy. You no, know, like I was calculating. So the point that I'm making is we weren't always at the bottom of the barrel, as you would say. We were on a mission. We had our own thing going. We were happy. We were functioning. We were segregated, which, fine, most people, most communities are still segregated, whether we know it or not, but we were functioning. So we have just um, been so dependent after that. I think we've just really forgotten how to help ourselves, right? And then uh, Gloria says, we need to ask why, I keep mm -hmm. forgetting to see the word don't. We don't need to ask why Nipsey did not leave the hood. Instead, we need to ask why the hood did not protect Nipsey. Why the hood did not step up and benefit more from the guidance of Nipsey. Absolutely, because that's a question I've heard too, it, or, or, or a statement is that they, he should have been protected more. You know, but it's, it just, obviously he didn't anticipate, you know, his name was Shitty Cuz. Yeah. Um, you know, to come out and do something like that, you quick, know. A quick question. Nipsey. But I agree with you. Nipsey was in South Central, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what area? In Slauson, in Crenshaw. Slauson, and Crenshaw. So kind of, kind of near Ingle Watts and that area, mm -hmm. type down like that. That is uh, Aunt Maxine's area, correct? I, yeah, South Central part, is, is my part, vaccine part Waters, it, yeah. All the gentrification is happening. Maxine uh -huh. ain't saying a word about and, it. You know, it's and, crazy. I, I mean, I don't know if Maxine Waters has said anything about it, but... You know, because here's a guy that was doing something in the community. You would think that Aunt Maxine, since she's so down for black folks, been working on reparations for 30 years, we haven't seen any paper of, of her progress. She would have uh, worked with Nipsey and... You know, made some of these uh, programs available. I've never to the heard community. him say anything. I'm not saying she hasn't, mm -hmm. or but I've never heard him say anything about Maxine Waters. Mm -hmm. That's a good observation. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in knowing if uh, Maxine Waters and Nipsey ever cross paths or work together. Hey, Erica, I say hello, but... Demetra. Off topic, but you look bomb. Oh, thank you, thank you yeah, so much. I, I really doubt that because obviously she's been too busy enriching herself over her constituents. It's interesting. We should check it out. Mm -hmm. You know, but. So, yeah, we uh, we need to keep this conversation going. We should never, ever stop talking about it. We should do our very best. Like, I know um, a lot of celebrities like uh, The Game, uh, Meek Mills, and um, a whole host of other uh, celebrities actually went to the store and bought everything. Mm -hmm. Bought everything out of the store. I think that's really what just kind of their way of, you know, maybe helping to support, obviously helping to support what's going on. But, you know... I made this comment to somebody else, um, and I actually went on his site, and there's a lot of shirts on there for 25 bucks, 35 bucks, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We pay that, you know, all day long for other people's stuff. But he has some shirts on the one I really want. Mm -hmm. The all money in one is 100 bucks, and the person said, oh, man, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, for but, a t-shirt, it is probably a lot mm -hmm. of money, but a lot of money in comparison to what? The Gucci shirt you'll probably buy? Mm -hmm. The, uh, the um, what, what are those... Uh... Uh, pants that the guys look at the leather pants that they like to wear. <laughs> you know, the Dude, Spanx. Uh, the, the Spanx the skinny pants. jeans. Yeah, the skinny. <laughs> right, I mean, in comparison to what? I mean, we spend money, a whole lot of money on things all day long and we don't complain, but it's, you know, one of our things like, ah, oh, shit, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. now, like, we want the silk screen knockoff. Right, but, you know, we, sh we should do our best to uh, keep what he was doing alive. I'm quite sure his brother, who was his business partner, will... Um, continue to do it. Lauren and um, a whole his dad was very instrumental mm -hmm. um, in the stuff that he was doing. So I'm sure they're just not going to throw their hands up and say, ah. Oh. Um, right. And Lavinia says, I cannot find anything on Maxine and Nipsey on the net. So, I mean, that's a really that's good a observation good because that, that is her district. That and is her district. Like, even in his death, I didn't see her say anything about it. Did him she even or, attend the funeral? I don't know if she attended a funeral. But yet we keep voting for these people who are not representing us or trying to get us into a better position. 
like I said, Maxine got elected on reparations. Now, here it is 30 years later, and reparations is a fixture. Is she even saying anything about Not reparations now? Me and that, that is word. so highly contested. Uh, Not a word. It's crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy. Girl, maybe she's going to let everybody else do the heavy lifting. I don't know. After 30 years, yeah, I think she's right. kind of tired because she's been working so hard on it. Okay. And Tay says the $100 shirt gives you access to the music for free. Absolutely. You can get the app and you wave your, it's neat. You wave your phone, the mm. app over the, um, sure. the, the marathon yeah. logo and you can see videos. Oh, wow. Yeah, videos or music places. It's, I was tripping out like, wow. So it said that he has the first smart store mm. ever. Okay. Where you know you purchase stuff South and, Central uh -huh, LA. in South Central LA, yeah. Uh, and Al says Maxine wasn't trying to nip it in the bud. He's crazy. <laughs> Erica says his clothing has technology built in. Yeah, I was, I was tripping off on that when I actually because I when I read about it, I was like, well, how does that work? But then when mm -hmm. I saw it, you actually see a video moving when you put the app, um, yeah. the phone, and the app over. Can I ask this? I don't know if you guys know the answer. Mm -hmm. um, the people that manufactured his clothes were those people in South Central, or you know, maybe did he go to another country? I'm not or for sure on how deep, yeah, um, it went. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it. No, 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 I'm just no, no, it's, I just wonder it's, it's because, because if it would have been somebody from South Central, wow, right, that's awesome. And then, um, and I'll tell you something about the funeral too, as well. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Uh, and uh, Tay says the shirt comes with a QR code that you can scan, and it allows you to have his music and some unreleased tracks. Yes. And then uh, Erica says free music and or video. Yeah, oh, okay. so I did see that. So um, in, in, in regards to like black stuff, mm -hmm. the funeral, it is said that as much as they could, they had black businesses or people, whatever, orchestrating the funeral. So he was buried and taken care of and stuff by uh, Angelus Black Funeral Home, which is a famous one out there. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so um, Him being of Somali descent, did he be buried in the Somali tradition or... I, nobody, mm, it was okay. Erethrian. Okay. Yeah, but nobody, it was private. Obviously, TMZ showed up there. So <laughs> you can't really see how they were doing it. Yeah. But, okay. Um, uh, they, so they said that they had, um, in a Y, uh, Nation of Islam doing security, yeah. even, um, and the All police right. kind of came secondary. Mm -hmm. um, and just a whole host of other things That's that awesome. they tried to do to keep it all black oriented. Uh, so let's see. Uh, doo doo doo. So Lori Laughlin didn't show up to the funeral. Who? The, the mom that got into the. Why the uh, hell was Lori? Thing. You know, because she's down. Okay, Aunt Becky. Aunt Becky. Uh, and Marcus says uh, we way too often allow ineffective leadership to represent the black community. Yes. They give great speeches and receive um, great applause for things they uh, say that fall on deaf ears. When it comes time to, oops, when it comes time to act upon them. Well, yeah, it's true. A lot you see of see Cory Booker. I'm gonna win it with love. And that's another thing too. <laughs> I, I I saw a lot of people saying about Nipsey is that he did a lot. Uh, he did more than a lot of politicians did. Mm -hmm. You know, as to your point, Marcus, we have a lot of people who say a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the crazy part is he was what some people would say kind of moving in silence because a lot of people never even heard of him until he died. It was like, wow, he was doing that. He was doing this. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, who knew? I mean, it was even to the point to where. Um, Fat Burgers out there um, were, was using his logo, his clothing logo okay. on their um, uniforms. Wow. Yeah, so he had a, uh, made a franchise deal with them. Also, he's got something coming um, in the fall of 2019 with uh, Puma and his clothing brand. So, I mean... He was making connections. Yeah, it's like, y'all in the neighborhood, I'm in the neighborhood, well, let's put the clothes together. Well, I, I, well, I, I got to give him props for this because... It's just, you know, in the music industry, I know we think we're going to live forever. Like I said, not many people could be uh, living on this earth for 48 years and only be 28 years old like yourself. Right, Benjamin Button. It, you know, but the music industry changes. You know, your music is going to fade out and those buyers that were buying when you were hot are eventually going to get older and your music's going to, you know, slowly decrease. And this right. guy seems like he was like, okay, I'm hot now as a rapper, but I got to think about... right. Because oh, that's what a pictures. lot of people say he was more than a rapper. Right. Now you hear more about, and then, of course, his music is now on the chart. His album, The Victory Lap, um, mm -hmm. peaked at number two again. Um, and then he has, you know, singles and stuff throughout mm -hmm. the, the Billboard 200 again, obviously, you know. And who knows how many masters he has, uh, like Prince. Right, and that's away. what they were saying, how much did, did he actually record. Or still have. Because mm -hmm. then you have a lot of different celebrities coming out saying, oh, my God, we were supposed to record. We was going to do this this summer and this, that, and the other. So, 
He had a lot going on, and Lavinia said she would look that up too. I think uh, in okay. regards to if uh, Maxine was there. Awesome. And Erica says, students from his STEM program, I believe. Also, he, she's thinking that the students from the STEM program that he has uh, came up with the codes and stuff. Okay, right yeah, on. awesome. Okay. Which, yeah, why wouldn't they be able to, right? Yeah, because exactly. They learn and, and, you know, and, stuff. You know, but, and the reason I, I, I brought that up is because in this country, we are depicted. As we are sitting on our hands doing absolutely nothing. Our children ain't shit. We ain't shit. Depiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah the depiction of it. Right. And And that's why I was like, I wonder if not only did he open a shop and the thing, he employed the people and gave oh, them yeah. the, the technology. Like he I said, did. if I'm a young kid and I'm a, let's say I'm a gamer, God forbid. Right. Where are our platforms for these kids to enhance their right. gaming experience? Or not, not just the game, because in the military right now, flying those drones... They need people who know how to play those kind of video games. Right. It's very technical. And he gave that platform to Oh, yeah, kids. absolutely. So, he big gave, up to him. That's big what he was trying him. to do. He said he was trying to bridge the gap between mm -hmm. the neighborhood and Silicon Valley. Right. Uh, by giving them those, um, those skills. You know, I just get tired of them always depicting us like we ain't shit. We ain't. Wow. We started civilization. So right. how did that narrative get flipped? Right. So easy. That's why it's called the false idea of white mm -hmm. supremacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Al right. says... Um, Montrez Harrell of the mm -hmm. Clippers will auction his shoes after the playoffs with the money going to Nippy. Uh, Nip, Nipsey. Nipsey, he put Nip, Nipsey's mm -hmm. kids. Awesome. I don't know if you saw the shoes. He had some designer make them. Um, it had uh, Nipsey Hussle on the shoes and the kid's name and Lauren's name. It was just awesome. an awesome pair of tennis shoes, I might say. But. Uh, can I ask, uh, what is uh, Mr. Carter doing in regards to... Uh, uh, Jay-Z? No. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh... Lauren, uh, baby daddy before that. Oh, uh, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne, yeah. I mean, I mean, is he? I mean, you know, obviously he he shared kids with this. Lauren uh, London, yeah, they have a yeah. child together. Huh? So this man was a step, a stepfather to his his son. Correct. And so on. So I uh -huh. wonder what the dynamics of that are. What you know, or, I mean, maybe, no, or I... maybe Lil Wayne, because Wayne's got a lot of money. Maybe he might help continue that legacy. Maybe. I mean, I've had, I haven't heard anything about Lil Wayne, but mm -hmm. it's um. From what, um, I think the little boy's name is Cameron. I, I might mm -hmm. have it wrong. But he spoke at the funeral, yeah. and he talked about um, um, how Nipsey would um, refer to him. He called him Aramia's. Um, Air uh, 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 um, how he referred to him, saying, what's up, killer? Mm -hmm. And he said he actually had a dream about him wow. um, after he died. And said mm -hmm. that he is in paradise, and, you know, he's okay. Well, that's false, but go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm telling you what the little boy yeah, said. Yeah, that's false. Though. Why, why is that false? Uh, because no man has ascended into heaven except Jesus himself. Because we have to have judgment day. Well, he he said paradise. He didn't say heaven. <laughs> How you know paradise according ain't that in, in, in uh, the lakes of Minnetonka uh, some damn Right. Uh, according to Jesus, when even when Lazarus came back, he didn't uh, he raised Lazarus. He didn't say, I just came from paradise. See, if you thinking about the white man's paradise, yeah. which is heaven. No, no, no. Okay, Heaven could be right here. Right. right. So you don't know where he was talking about when he said paradise, but that's what he said. Okay. That par he said he was in paradise. Okay. So if we, yeah, we follow the white man's narrative, then... Nobody's come back from that. Well, I mean, you don't know. Well, then again, I don't know. Your mom just sent us a message before right. we started the show. Were right. So, so. hey... <laughs> uh, and hey, D said his mom is so dope. Yes, and I want to talk about his mom. I took wrote this down. I want to talk about his mm -hmm. mother. Um, and then Tay says, I don't know where the clothes are made, but the designer is black. Awesome. Okay. See. And Al says, I was asked, did I like any of Hustle's music? I said, you damn nippy. Oh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spit out my damn tea. I almost spit it out. I quit it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Marcus man. says the problem with um, not knowing the value of Nipsey Hustle is that we do not spotlight our own until they reach a certain status. Yeah, sad. Uh, until they reach a certain status, I can't see that in the comment for some reason. Ah. Okay, until until they reach until they reach a certain status, we have to be willing to learn where we can lend our support to those who are really boots on the ground. Absolutely, I mean. I think a lot of people who lived in Los Angeles knew, but a lot of people mm -hmm. outside, outside um, didn't really know the magnitude in which he was moving around, you yeah. know. Um, but we know now, and, you know, they, they say you can kill the man, but you can't kill his ideas. Absolutely. And so his ideas will always be here as long as we continue to move in that and start working together because he saw what was going on. Uh, me and Donovan were just talking about this before we came on. 
Uh, there's a neighborhood in Inglewood that is gentrified to the point where they're re um, revamping the form or something yeah, like they, that. Yeah, they're building that new Ram Stadium there. And and the people like there's an article of this man, a uh, black man who was paying eight hundred something yeah, dollars it's on a YouTube month. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then now he's living with the sister because his rent went up to seventeen hundred dollars, yeah. and he's on Social Security fixed yeah. income. And they're saying. Uh, and then he said, too, he's going to probably have to move again because mm -hmm. his sister doesn't live too right, far. Right, right. So every, we're, we're being all those, priced out. Yeah, all those homes by a brand new billion-dollar stadium, you think they want those old homes sitting up there? No, right. you're going to have to go. And it's just like what they're doing in Vegas. Um, they've got this stadium. They're building those condos and stuff, and people are renting out those condos for, like, right. thousands of dollars. No, those, those old homes in Inglewood's Aunt Maxine's area but she's probably getting a kick back from exactly, it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But, they, but those homes aren't going to stay. So those people are going to have to go because nobody wants to see coming into a billion dollar stadium all these older. Right. And, and, and but that's what Nipsey was trying to combat mm -hmm. um, by building um, low income homes and stuff. That was one thing he was working yeah. on a six story um, housing unit with a commercial property on the bottom. So he was trying to do a lot of things to um, combat the gentrification, which harms us in the long run mm -hmm. when we don't stay in the neighborhood or we don't build up or buy back the block as a lot of people say there's an initiative called buy back the block um where we stay in the neighborhood see then there's the other part of that argument when we leave the neighborhood guess who comes in exactly so when we with money i hate like how i said that we with money mm -hmm. speaking into existence yeah. uh, when we with money um, leave the neighborhood the others with money comes in and then mm -hmm. our people who don't have the money end up getting forced out because there's not enough of us to stay and buy stuff to help us continue to build. Yeah, if you got a, a chance, check out the advice show. Phil from oh, the yes. advice show was talking about that and you know how uh, black people are actually being moved out of California because it's so expensive here. Our yeah, gas right now. Everybody moving out of yeah, California. Our gas, but us particularly. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, the gas right now in California is at $4. We're not Four even... Four damn dollars. And the refinery has not blown up yet. Yet. And when it blow does blow up, they're gonna that's gonna jack it up even more. But um, y'all hear that four dollars a $4 gallon, a gallon, and it's not even summertime, summertime yet, and no refinery explosion in California. Four dollars a gallon. If I want to get two gallons, I gotta pay eight dollars. Now right. I don't know what y'all drive. I it, it but, cost me forty dollars to put a half a tank of yeah, gas the, in my car. The country average is two dollars and thirty seven cents for gas. Ain't that some shit? I, I I I saw also. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just saying because you know. To some people, four dollars a gallon is a lot, not a lot that, of money. That's a but lot. But to a lot of people, it the is. The average person in California, we were that just is at a lot. two, what, two nine to eighty. Yeah, and we were happy about that. We, we, were, we should be upset. That but was we were like happy. a month ago. Yeah, we were happy. So we were at two something, yeah. and now we're at four bucks. And that doesn't even include in California the five point something cent tax, tax that's going to be added that. on in the summertime. Yes. Per gallon. Right. And we're still waiting for the refinery explosion. <laughs> I know you guys are like, what are you talking about? Refinery explosion. To justify keeping the prices up, there's always a refinery explosion that continues. So let's say the barrel of the cost right. of barrels go down. In California, it was like an incident that always happened. There would be an explosion at the right. refinery. Oops. And right. then they say, oh, we got to keep the gas prices up because now we're only down to so many refineries to refine right. the, the crude. Right. And that's what uh, usually does us in. But to your point, a lot of people, especially black people, but a lot of people are just like, I'm out of here. Yeah. I can't, I, I like, I'm working well, to, to, to pay rent. Well, well yeah. When the thing is deport, disproportionately, it affects black people more so than other groups because we don't stick together. We right. Don't, we don't practice group economics. Right. So that's going to force us to keep moving east. Absolutely. As far as we can get. So if you guys are down in Houston. Where that we big, coming to join, y'all. Yeah. When you guys have a, a spike in violence, that's probably these... L.A. Negroes that have moved out there and brought the L.A. mentality. The with comments them. and the views of that <laughs> yeah, dude does I'm not just... necessarily reflect the comments and the views. Of right. Them. No, I'm just okay. joking with that. But no, but that's exactly what's happening to us. We're being right. priced out of California completely. And Tay says, I filled up yesterday and it cost me $55. Christian, what you driving? I need mm -hmm. to get what you driving. Mm -hmm. but I, like I said, $40 a half a tank for me. That's, that's what I paid. Well, um, well, well uh, you got to remember, uh, she has that economical high hybrid all wheels, you know, capped. And mine's is eco, it has eco on it too. Yeah, but hers is that hybrid, you know. I need to give me a Tape, my moment. Tape ballin'. She, you know. And uh, Al says, I wonder if he had any relationship songs like, uh, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm done with Al. <laughs> Alan can no longer be taken seriously. 
And, and Tay says, and I was at half tank. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yikes. I was about to be mad and jealous for yeah. a minute. So she was already at yeah. half tank, and it's costing her an additional yeah, $55 to fill up. So she's got at least 110 bucks. See, I'm going to be on that, the ignorance stuff. I ain't going to be filled up for a minute. <laughs> yeah, you're going to wait till you got that. Uh, the E comes on and that right. light. And you're going to keep it at a fourth. For a minute. Yeah, keep right. it at a fourth. Like you're going to get $20. You yeah, know, that's you what know, you know, around the block, right? Yeah, and I know a lot of people say, well, where's the mass transit? You guys got to understand in California, even if you have your own car to go somewhere, you got to think two hours ahead. She said it's not a gas a hybrid. It's a gas guzzler. It's gas guzzler. Okay, yeah. and hey, Ishmael, he says, uh, yeah, people are always talking about on the neighborhood is looking up. With building of condos, but you won't be living in those condos. Right. Someone said gentrification. Yes. Right. Um, that in Riverside, where I live, like in downtown. Yeah. All those uh, those loft homes. They, yeah, they got yes. the lofts, lofts. now, the, the, yes. the mission lofts. And that used to be not like a bad area. But no, yeah, to keep it real. Yeah, it was it was a very depressed area. It was, it was like old Riverside. Yes, it's like don't walk down the street at yeah. night or in at dusk. Yeah, it was like the 1950s there. It was yes. like they didn't do anything. They just moved the city hall exactly. or down the street. And now it's, they got the lofts over yeah. there. It's in the, like... They're red and like this nice red and gray mm. type of building, mm. nice and beautiful loss. Smack dab in the middle of, like you said, an area that probably hasn't been renovated since right. the 50s. Right. You know, now a lot of people are going to sit there and tell you, well, what's wrong with that? You know, uh, you know, we always scream about you know, they don't invest in the hood and, you know, urbanization and all this other stuff, the construction, it brings jobs, it brings this. Well, in our neighborhood, especially uh, that stadium that's being built, most of the people doing the work are not black. Because we don't have construction skills, a lot of us. A lot of the construction firms that are doing it are Hispanic or white construction sure. firms from San Jose and out and of state. And that is why Carter G. Wilson talked about in the miseducation of the Negro, mm -hmm. is that, yes, the good degrees, like in philosophy, mm -hmm. psychology, all that stuff is good, mm -hmm. but we still need people who know how to build. Yeah. Like, where are the black construction companies? Right. Where are they? Right. Where are the black landscaping businesses? Where are the black... Car washes. But you got to remember, because of reparations, they don't want to do this. They, uh, that's why we need reparations, because that's why they, they don't exist as much as they should, because we weren't allowed to get those contracts. We but what, if, what about if I just started small? You know, like me, I, I don't, I, I can wash my own car. I don't like to because I don't do a good job, mm -hmm. per se. I just, I try and I just mm -hmm. don't. But I'm like, it would be nice if I could just roll my car up to a black car wash. Mm -hmm. I mow my own lawn because I'm not going to pay anybody else to mm -hmm. do the lawn. But what if I didn't want to do it that day? Mm -hmm. And it'd be nice to call up Leroy's lawn service. Right. Hey, you know, brother, can you come over and come grass today? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Be nice to do that. Like, I have to do my own nails, you guys, and my own feet because I won't walk into an um, Asian nail salon and, and get do choked those out. things. I, and get, get choked, choked out. out. <laughs> I just won't do it. Like, where are the black it's salons? Right. So where I can walk in there and say, hey, girl, mm -hmm. I'm back. For my two week, you know, whatever the case is, like where we need those things, right. even right. if it's something small. Hell, I even go to the house. Right, and um, <laughs> you know, just real quick, uh, even Phil said this: when you see a Starbucks coming into your neighborhood, and you know, and let's say your neighborhood was depressed, and it's people, over. Yeah, that's the start of gentrification. Yeah, when you see the Starbucks, and you we see ain't the, on no Starbucks like mm -hmm. that. You know, that's when they're going to start moving you out, right? There. Right. That is the key. And James says, "Hello, black builder and develop." A developer right here so he's saying that's what i do so right on. you right guys on. um james where where are you at where what area um of the country are you right so on. i mean these are the type of things that we need to know if y'all mm -hmm. have a business or something shoot put it out there mm -hmm. these are the that like we need to know these things right you know donovan can fix his whole house mm -hmm. you know he just put up a big giant solar. propeller <laughs> in his solar. House. Solar. it's a solar thing <laughs> In his house yeah, yesterday, attic fan, yeah. But let's say one day he didn't want to. What right. if he what? And that's the sad thing because you know we got a lot of Mexicans around here, yeah. And they always are, you know, give me these signs. Oh, we'll you know put this up. Well, where we'll put is this Leroy's exactly solar business? And that's why I have to do it myself because, right. like, like you just said, I would prefer to give my money right to a brother or a sister, right. whatever the case may be, right? Because we could put up yes. propellers too, yes. <laughs> Versus uh, Jorge and and you know the right. Perez company, right? You know, and so I'm, I'm very tight when it comes to my money. So when there's nobody around, I do it myself. Right. And then, too, we talk about this a lot, um, especially out here. California is either Asian or Hispanic. Yes. 
White people, yeah, I got a lot of white people. Yeah, but they're in the nice, yeah, their own communities. Everywhere you look now, you're seeing Asians and Hispanics and black yeah. people. You're starting to see a few far in between. Yeah, like I, I, when I go walking on a mountain with my daughter, I I see us, but I don't see us, us. like I see everybody yes, else. Right. And I tell her all the time. I said, this is just indicative of what's going on everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is about how it's gonna be from now on. It's gonna be a lot of them, the others, and then some of us, like mm -hmm. sprinkling a couple of pieces of pepper in a salt, you know, yeah, container. It, it's almost the same, it's the same thing up in, in, in Detroit. All the black people are now migrating back but to the But why south. haven't we snatched up the properties in Detroit? That was dirt cheap. Um, somebody, I can't remember who I was watching. Yes, $5,000. You can get a nice Dr. Spot. Claude Anderson was saying that um, Detroit is now primarily Arabs. Yeah, and Arabs it, and Chinese. Yeah, he yeah. was saying that... Uh, like eighty seven percent of the gas stations there are, are um Arab yes. owned. Yes. Absolutely. Because they've gone in there and snatched up the properties that were dirt cheap through the due to mm -hmm. all the, you know, um was the the, uh, the factories that were factories closing were and closing stuff. And... Cause and that's another thing we primarily rely as black people on factory jobs. And when those mm -hmm. jobs left then we were stuck. Yep. And, and so now there's a the mass migration to the South. Right. And there's not a lot of jobs in the South. When white people are comp competing for the same jobs that like they used to back in the day, right? <clears throat> um, the jobs that they didn't they won't, yeah. but now they won't. Mm -hmm. But then, but in the South too, the the uh, Guatemalans and see, I know it's going to be unpopular what I just say right now, but there's some things that Trump does that I agree with. I'm not saying build the wall, you know, metaphorically, but if we keep letting these people come in to replace us. Well, but New Orleans was pretty much rebuilt I agree. by by uh, right, Latinos. and I agree with that. But while they're debating the wall, why don't we get our stuff together? Well, the thing, and that's another thing about the wall. Do you know in some parts of the wall where they're repairing it or it has been approved? They're, I looked it up. They are paying people eighty something dollars. That's an what hour. I heard. They're paying oh. eighty five thousand an hour to help build the wall. And who do you think those contracts are going to? White companies. Right. It's just a fact. It is. And then Al says, there's plenty of black car washes. The water holes on the side of the house. <laughs> I, you know what? While you BSing, I would told if you had a car wash at your oh house, my goodness. I would drive up yeah. to your house and let you wash my car. Mm -hmm. If you had a little nail shop out of the garage or whatever we sit at the kitchen sink, I would let yes. you do that if it meant that I was giving right. you my black dollars. I don't have a problem with that because right. um, we got to start somewhere. Wait, wait. Well, what are the restaurants doing right now? You can order something and they'll, they'll deliver it to your house. And but and, and also a lot of people, I don't have Instagram anymore, but from what I understand, a lot of people are starting to cook and stuff and yeah. they're taking orders from Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, so they are doing it that way. So and of course these chick these chicks are tricking off on Instagram too, so you can get you some some kids. We don't want that. <laughs> hey Artemis, and now you said, How about having a mobile nail um um and salons? Yes, I know yeah. a lot of, some people do, I just don't know where they are, but yeah. Yeah, why not? And travel. Travel. Mm -hmm. But we got to start somewhere. Because like I said, I, those things I just mentioned to y'all, doing my nails and washing the car and the lawn, I don't necessarily love doing those things. Mm -hmm. Especially, but, you know, when you're 28 years old. When you're 28 years old, you're just getting up there, so you don't <laughs> want to do those things. But I'm not, I would rather do it myself than have, you know, no shade to anybody, you know, Hispanic, but, you know, um, Gonzalez's landscaping no. business. No, you, you're doing, doing the exact same thing that they're doing. You're trying to practice group economics. Right. That's all you're doing. Exactly. Because you ain't going to see Leroy and them pulling up to none of their houses to right. landscape they are. Exactly. It's just the truth. And Jay says, um, so he's in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Oh, why not? Oh. Uh, projects on, um, Mar in Maryland, Georgia, and my home state of Virginia. Let's go. So it says Sydney, no, Sydney, oh, hold on a second. Sid Nor. Sid Nor. Mm -hmm. Energy. Oh, okay. I've heard dot that. Com. Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah. Um. Sanders, let me write it down. You need to get you some, uh, if you don't already have some contracts at some of those military bases. Like I used to go over at Camp Lejeune, man. Man, you get over there, government at its worst. You could they just throw money at you and you ain't even doing the job. So I want to repeat that because for my YouTube um, audience that will eventually see this, that mm -hmm. is Sidnor Energy. Sidnor Energy. Dot com, and that's S Y D O. I mean, I'm sorry, start over. S Y D N O R. E N E R G Y dot com. Yeah. yeah, they're big over there. He says that he 
is actually his company, his yeah. last name. He's uh, 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 so he is in Maryland, Georgia, and his home state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so I, I've heard of them. I've heard of them. So he does uh, yeah, construction and building. Okay, right. All right. And uh, hey, Arson, he says, hey guys, I just wanted mm -hmm. to say I'm out here. I won't be saying anything because I will admit it for the first time. I am one of those guys who didn't know Nipsey until he got shot. Mm. But um, let's see, until he got shot. Doo, doo, doo. But you. Uh, but since you guys are mentioning gentrification, you mean to say they're doing this is to you guys in the USA too? Because he's in Canada. Yeah. Hey, yes. Yes. So I can't believe this here in Montreal, Canada. There is a black neighborhood named Burgundy that was well situated near downtown, near the Forum, etc. And what they did all around it is they built expensive condos, mm -hmm. brought in new businesses, rental uh, prices for the barbershops skyrocketed, mm -hmm. etc. Guys, the heart of the town is gone. Yep. It is slowly dying. They say that same thing about um, uh, Harlem. Harlem. Say it's gone. Harlem, New York. Yep. Said there Harlem, is no more folks. Harlem at the way um, we saw it when we went yeah, visited or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that is no longer. It's completely gentrified, which is so sad. To Very me. sad. Uh, and Marcus says, we don't snatch up property because we don't understand what investment means. We don't invest in stock markets because we don't understand what stock means mm -hmm. we don't trust investments with each other uh let's see uh, we don't with each other in group economics because we think that we're going to get uh played despite the fact that there may be contractual agreements we don't mm -hmm. do a lot of things because we don't know any better yeah we, absolutely well here's the number mm -hmm. one thing we were talking about it uh today uh before we came on show uh our, not just snatching up property. What about the property we're already in? Grandma dies, and everybody wants to sell the property. Like, why do we do that? Why do we do that when the matriarch or the patriarch of the family mm -hmm. dies? We get greedy, and we want to sell it. And, and get you, the money. You get your part, I get my part. It's like, okay. So what happens is we sell the house that you wasn't benefiting from anyway. anyway. Mm -hmm. Want to sell it, and then we sell it to somebody who's maybe from the Asian or Hispanic community, mm -hmm. Arab, whatever. And then... Your people can no longer, you know, it just makes it hard for them to stay because they're just waiting. Um, I have a friend on here named John um, uh, Sanders. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I forget where he's in. I think he's in Baltimore. But he has this um, initiative, this coalition, where they go around and tear down the We Buy Houses signs, um, signs for mm -hmm. cash because he said they do that in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. the black right. neighborhoods, um, to get people to sell so they can gentrify it. So he mm -hmm. says that they go and tear the signs down and they go to City Hall mm -hmm. and say, you guys better do something because we're going to continue yeah. to tear it down. You're not going to come in here yeah. and get our people who are a lot of times probably struggling with, damn, let me sell mama house. Yeah. And, and, then, and then they take that money, trick that money off, be in child support payments or taxes or whatever. And then, and then uh, Ling Wong and them got your damn house. Right. You know. Right. I mean, uh, right here where I live right now, uh, this used to be a white neighborhood because it was a big military community. Mm -hmm. Base closes, long story short, um, been 30, 40, 50 years actually. Uh, the neighborhood has changed now. It's mostly Hispanic. I'm right. one of the last black people you in the neighborhood. You're the last Negro on the block. On the block. Yeah. And it's sad. It's sad. Very sad. And then um, Artemis, he says, we need the church to step up their game. I know we absolutely do need the church, the church to step up their problem. game. Yeah. The I prosperity mean, message really screwed a lot of people up. It's a prosperity mer uh, message, and they collect <clears> so much money, and a lot of them are in the neighborhoods that are just totally dilapidated. And you got those people who are going in for hope. But yet, when they leave the church and they go back to a situation that's just terrible, like yeah. where are the community centers? Where are the you know the uh, the programs that actually help the people who are in the church when they're not in the church? Right. You know. Um, point. And then Al says, uh, "Make a U-turn on the four hundred five. You missed some comments. <laughs> Did I really? Oh man, he's so damn silly." He's talking Let's about the 405. And you know, you know, he's been visiting here too much. <laughs> he knows about the 405. I, did I, I, I don't see any comments that I missed. Oh, I see you. Okay. Uh, oh, I did, huh? Oh, so Tay says the price in downtown is insane. Yep. And Al says gas here in Houston is two forty five. I don't have mm. eco in the tank, but definitely oxy in the laundry. <laughs> I, I should have went about with my better um, intuition. That's it. Uh, and then Tay says, if you're in LA, um, have an IG follow Trap Kitchen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've heard about Trap Kitchen. Trap Kitchen. But okay. I, they're not vegan though. That's I think that's why I haven't visited them because I don't. Unless I don't think they're vegan, but I know they're black owned, and I have heard of Trap okay. Kitchen. Yes. Okay, so I'm writing this stuff down because I, I need to know these things. He says, it's black-owned um, food, and they are good. 
Okay. Emphasis on good. Okay. Uh, and then let's see. In Lavinia, you say, example, Lafayette Square. Paul Williams designed most of the houses there and now mm -hmm. are gentrifying. Ain't that some yep. mess? Yep. Sad. We got to stop that. We, well, we just got to well, stop that. Well, well here, here's my question for you, Demetria. If all these black people are, are moving, where are they moving to? And if, and if we're moving to Blackville or, you know, Correct. whatever, and, and, you know, out in Texas or Oklahoma, get some land and everybody just, you, we all buy but into see, it. But see, first we got to get rid uh, of that mind frame of, I need to go move in a better community. Mm -hmm. I need to go to a better neighborhood. Right. We also know when we as black people say we're going to move somewhere better, we mean somewhere white. Right. When we right. say we're going to send our kids to a better school, that means a white school. Mm -hmm. And so on an individual basis, we're like, I'm doing good. Like, I can afford this 3000 a month mortgage. Mm -hmm. You know, because you might, you might be able to. But what about the rest of your people? Right. You know, because eventually that's going to come back to mm -hmm. you. Well, um, and, and, and let me say this for the listeners out there. Okay. I am the last Negro on the block. Mm -hmm. And because I'm the last Negro and I have not sold, what is your biggest uh, expense living? Your house. Your house. Or right. where, where you live, your overhead, your right. rent, your mortgage. Because I don't have a mortgage, and I'm not bragging on that. The thing sure is, you're not. The thing is, because you know I don't have that overhead... I can do other things, oh, yeah. which means it's wealth within itself. We and, you know, Donovan always talks about, you know, people wanting him to sell his All home. All the time. And he's like, things. what am I selling my house for? Because right. we talked about this before it came on. And you sell your house, you're the last black man in the name, in this vicinity anyway. Mm -hmm. Who else is going to move in here? Right. Then right. there goes the, the neighborhood. There goes the neighborhood. I mean, I'm saying so. Like, you own the house free and clear. Mm -hmm. Why would you sell it? Mm -hmm. Like, like hold on to we We need to, like, start holding on to what yes. we have. Especially when uh, I started getting more notices when they saw me doing the improvements mm -hmm. on the house. So now they're like, oh, this guy's. And that's what Nipsey was trying to do. He was trying to say, okay, I see what y'all doing. Mm -hmm. Y'all building up and gentrifying. Okay, I'm going to put some right here. Here. Exactly. And how y'all like that? Yeah, do you guys you remember, know? You guys remember a few years ago in the, in the 80s where that uh, Donald Trump was trying to make that casino in New Jersey or yeah. something? And this old lady had property mm -hmm. there. And he tried to public domain it. And he was you know, petitioning the city. And, She's like, it's from and, my cold yeah, dead hands. And he had to end up building around her. Yeah. And it was like a little delamination in this building where the, and the lady finally died. You know, then he yeah. took over the property, whatever. And they sold the property. Her family sold the property. Dummies. But um, the point is, he ended up having to go around her, right. her property because he couldn't get it. Right. You know. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. And how says yesterday, uh, 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 Amir Johnson of the Philadelphia 76ers said he used his cell phone while on the bench because his daughter was extremely sick. So I guess some player mm. got in trouble okay. or something. Okay, because he was telling me about it. And uh, Erica says, I've been to many free seminars for property investing, and I would be one of five in a group, say, of 500. It is them or us. Mm. Or them, and she's asking the question. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's pretty, probably pretty accurate. You know, yeah. when we go to those type of things, there's not very many of us. And it's like, why? Because we're not teaching our kids values and we're not. And I, I think that, and um, I think it's also because we are barely surviving. And so when you're barely surviving, mm -hmm. and I've been to that point before when I was just barely surviving. And so when you're barely surviving, it's hard to see that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. it's like, damn, I'm trying to figure out what we're going to eat tomorrow, let alone go buy some property. Mm -hmm. You know, and so... First, we need to fix ourselves, you know, to the level where we're not struggling and surviving as much anyway. And then when we do get the lump sum of money, whether it's taxes or whatever, you know, take care of our foundation and then say, hey, I've got some money here. Let's invest it. See, what I don't understand is you got like this lunch programs that, you know, people don't, we don't take advantage of lunch programs. But, okay, I have friends that are doing well. They get their nails done. They get their hair, hair done. They put their weaves in. You know how I feel about that. But then I look. And they're feeding their kids top ramen all the damn time. Damn. So, you know, so what I'm saying is we have to start thinking a new way where we got to get our kids, number one, nutritious. Because if you, all that salt and sodium. Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, it, come it, on now. It, so that's, so to your point, we got to fix ourselves. ourselves right. and then we can look at, um, as Erica said, being more than just one of five in these seminars yeah. we're learning about uh, investing and stuff. Because we've gotten that taken care of first. We're right. not, you know... Uh, struggling and surviving well, and all that kind well, of Well, there's a rule in the art of war. You can't fight a war if you don't know anything about your enemy. True. So you got to study what they're doing that makes them so successful. Why was Napoleon uh, considered one of the greatest uh, statisticians, statisticians or whatever, strategists, strategists ever? Yeah. Strategists ever. Uh -huh. 
and all these countries studied what this man did. Shaka Zulu, because all, all Napoleon did, by the way, was take Shaka Zulu's strategy and put it in the modern times where he was at. Right. Separating and, you know, whatever. That's another story. But my point is, you got to know what they're doing so that you can be successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's see. Uh, and Lavinia, he says, one of the top five disgusting aspects of racism is no transgenerational wealth transfer. Nipsey was working to curb that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is none. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that? It's, you know, being able to leave a legacy to your kids or, your, you know, the, first, uh, the next generation. And we don't do that. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we die, we leave debt. We don't leave a legacy. Well, I, have, how many of you guys out there have heard of this, uh, the show Hoarders? Mm hmm Okay. That is a prime example. It's an extreme example of what we do as a people. Now, you got these people that, that have got all this stuff. Now, you don't know what kind of wealth is sitting in that, that hoard, but what's the first thing those kids do when they come there? They just throw everything out without knowing what is in there. Right. Because they don't want anything to do right. with it. And, and that's what we do as a people. That's what we do as a people, as black people. Right. Oh, I don't want to do a grandma's house. Let me just sell it. Right. I don't want to do Oh, but I want the car. Right. She had a Mercedes. I want the car. And then you get the Mercedes, you don't have enough money to, to maintain it. And if it breaks down. And you run it into the ground. And then it goes to the junkyard and somebody takes it and fixes it. Because, you know, German cars are very good. But. Right. And Arsene says, the only thing you should do if your house is paid off instead of selling it is maybe refinance it for a small amount to invest in your money in a project, sure. bond, stocks, and real estate. Yeah, absolutely. Or Keep it and make it rental property to generate you money. A rental property. Mm -hmm. What happened when you made your house a rental property? Well, that was, well, <laughs> you know, okay, here's something for everybody that doesn't know. When you're in California dealing with these type of people out here where people are struggling, literally, they don't care. In California, the renter has more rights than the owner. It's called due process. Right. You got to give them due process. And in a lot of cases, if you really want your property back right. in a timely manner, you got to pay them. And it's like out. six, nine months yeah. before they, they, you get to that point. Right. And by then, you exhausted all right. your financial and, resources. And if, and if you want to get before the six, nine months, you negotiate with them. They might charge you. Well, I'll leave if you give me $20,000. Right. How bad do you want your property back? You leave us in the homies to your house. Right. You know, and so, so, <laughs> so, so, so it's gotten that bad out here, but it's a nightmare. And when you're dealing in a, in a society to where the wealth gap is so huge, What's the point of suing somebody that ain't got nothing? Right. Yeah. And then Marcus says, why, why not create right now or invest a group investment project and build on that weekly? As you said, we have to start somewhere. somewhere. And mm -hmm. that somewhere is here because you have uh, Mitchell's right in front of you. Mitchell's right mm -hmm. in front of you. Mm. I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe I missed what you were saying, but who is Mitchell's? Is Mitchell's that some store or something? I'm not for sure. Or missiles? No, not missiles. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. No, we got some missiles yeah. in front of us. You never know yeah, at Donovan's house. There might be some yeah, missiles well, up in here. Like I said, uh, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> I know, but I, I like that. I um, In fact, I was talking with Ricky once. I don't know if he's still on here, but he was saying the same thing. Let's start an investment group. And then he said, we decided, well, why not start the investment group? And I know a lot of families do it. Mm. But start an investment group with your family. You know, everybody gets, because, you know, it's I don't. I hate to say it, but people are gonna have that trust issue. Well, I don't trust you. I don't trust. Okay, so start. Or when the with, payments do so and so short on there. So end. start with your family members first. Hey, okay. family, let's get together. Let's have this meeting. Okay, every payday, we gonna all put in twenty. Uh, uh, I need my twenty dollars for gas. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> my nails. I gotta get my nails done. So that's what you have to get good at the communication yes, process there you go. and say, this is why we need this money. Right. Everybody put twenty fifty dollars in a week with the goal of doing X, Why do y, I gotta put twenty fifty dollars in? Well what's gonna happen is when you're gonna get cut out of the project and then when you see us getting it up and running, then you're yeah. gonna be on the outside so looking it, in. It, so I suggest you be quiet and yeah. adding up your money. Yeah, and it always works like that. When the when the thing hits, then they want their fair cut. They say when you build a thing will come. Cut. Right. Yeah. Uh but so start start. With your family, with the goal of doing something. That's what Asians do. There's a book that I was reading called uh, The Seek uh, uh, Hidden Secrets of Oriental Wealth. That, oh, he's not on here. I don't see him. Mm -hmm. He actually recommended me to read about two years ago, and I shared it with everybody. Mm -hmm. The Hidden Secrets of Oriental. Oh, my charger's dying. Secret, mm -hmm. hidden, mm -hmm. hidden Secrets of. No, leave, leave it. So you, oh, you have it. Hidden Secrets of Oriental Wealth. And it talked about how Asians will. Um, Collect their money, just like I said. They'll collect their money together, and then when they, somebody needs to start a business, they'll say, okay, we got $100,000. Let me see if it's uh, charging. 
probably your cord. It, it looks like it is. Okay. I'll let you know if it gives me the mm -hmm. doo doo doo. Uh, um, so somebody needs to start a business. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have $100,000. We got $100,000. Okay, you take the $10,000, $20,000, get your business going, and when you get the money back, put it back, and then the next person who needs to move by well, house. Well, no, I got to buy Jordans for my child. No, nah, you ain't going to be included then. Okay? And so, yeah. You need Jordans. So start with your own. Let's start with our own families mm -hmm. to do that. Let's, let's build the fun of, you know, for having... And, and let me strongly recommend payroll deduction, please, you know, or some kind of direct deposit where you're going to get the money right out because you have to wait for so-and-so to show up on a Friday. Or just, with you know, payment. the honor system, like... You know who's in your who are the people in your family who gonna do the right, right thing. Right. You know, so just go by the honor system. Mm -hmm. All right, you know every Friday get paid, put your money in, and we gonna do you know or, whatever. Or how about this? Um, and I, I would suggest this in, in, in your suggestion. Everybody try to to be at the same banking facility. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you guys, yeah. as the, the group itself, everybody or part of the you same thing. You can do that, right. or let's start the account at a banking right. facility, preferably a black bank. Right. Even though some people will say the black banks are still regulated by the mm -hmm. government, the FDIC, but it's yeah. a start. Right. You know, what I'm saying is you have that mutual right. thing where you guys are all together. Right. But with all, we, you can work out all the dynamics you need mm -hmm. to with your family, where you're going to bank and all that, but start with your family, an investment group with your family. I know um, my daughter and I, we um, have some things that we are going to be doing in the near future. Um, she wants to buy a lot, buy a lot and start farming on it in the neighborhood because we know that uh, in a lot of the neighborhoods, there are food deserts. And so she wants to start farming on the land and open up like a co-op where people can come buy fruits and vegetables from in the neighborhood. Okay. And so Lavinia says, I disagree with that. I think she's talking about well, what to do with the money mm -hmm. with the house. Mm -hmm. um, that you own it. Erica, she says, I own a business and I've tried to offer space for other black small business owners to use for little or no money and I was looked at as an opportunist. Really? Mm -hmm. What Jealousy. can I do to explain building as Jealousy. a community in my area? I Help. You know, and that's so sad. Jealousy. But those same people, and I hate to talk about us, but they'll go and get a white man, you know, rent. And, um, on time. On time. But won't be able to afford it because they too busy trying to front. But here the sister yeah. is trying to give them an opportunity to open up your, you know, a small business. You know, probably not as much as they're going to pay on their own. But yet they can see an opportunity. I'm trying to help you. Well, well, the funny thing is, okay, everybody wants to be a business person. Now, you see the white guy does it. And, you know, it's expected that the guy is going to make a profit. He's a businessman. You want to make him some kind of profit. Right. Now, when we take that same thing for us, we don't want you to make a big profit. Well, and that's unfortunate, but Erica, I would just say this, just keep talking to people because the people who are like-minded are going to see what you're trying to do and they're going to jump on that opportunity. So the people, this is why, because I, I have to take this advice myself, which is why I don't work with a lot of people and I, you know, it's, it's a long story, mm -hmm. but those people are like, well, well you, try, you don't want to work with those people anyway, because mm -hmm. they ain't going to act right. But there are people out there who will, you know, mm -hmm. say I would, I'm trying to help my brothers and sisters out. I want to give them the first opportunity. You know, you got a small business you want, come on over. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, because um, Erica, you're into the paint and sip type of thing, right? She has a, um, a painting business where you go and have parties and you paint oh, okay. and drink. Yeah. I'm um, very successful. Do I get a discount? And stop it. If I come? <laughs> no. Oh. See, see, I, I don't want to go with her. But yeah, just keep talking to people. You'll come across somebody who's like minded and who mm -hmm. want to, you know, um, right take thing. up on your opportunity. Exactly. And Lavinia says, rents are so bad. People are um, bidding for apartments. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, especially in California, bidding on yeah. San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be in uh, d downtown LA, one bedroom apartment, gentrified apartment, you're looking at twenty six hundred, twenty seven dollars. Hell, for downtown Riverside, is that for a loft or a loft, a, yeah. crazy it's, as hell? It's, and you know, and and the thing is, the only people that can afford those are what? Got it. And then oh, white like, folks, right? And then uh, she says you're replying to. Let's see. Marcus says, replying to Erica, I meant to say you have the uh, tools right in front of you. You and Donovan would be a great start to build. So you're talking about the fund? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could do that. But I just I always just think it's easier to start with the people who are closest yeah, to you. Yeah, your family members. We can all have that conversation with people we know who are closest to us. You know, your family. That's what everybody else does. They have, you know, they start with their family, then they branch out, and they mm -hmm. own all kind of stuff. I mean, so start there, and then you can start bigger. But, you know, and, and, and what kills me is this. Okay, my mom's the oldest of 12 children, and my dad's the second oldest of, like, 22. Mm -hmm. 16 or 17 of them alive still right now. And they have kids and cousins. I mean, you could just start right there. There's your conglomerate right there. 
But Marcus says, I believe the start with your family project is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Family creates a mess it that does. you can't get out of, but a sound investment among people getting to know each other is something you can. I agree with you, brother. Um, it's something you can build up on, and there is no personal feelings involved should someone decide to walk away. Right. I, you know Business. what? I disagree Business. with that to this for this reason here. If I can't get along with my family, yeah, how I'm gonna get along with? Cause how I know I ain't the one that's causing the problems. Mm -hmm. We see we gotta fix that ideology within our family. Cause we all know there's somebody who ain't gonna act right. Okay. Well, maybe they don't get to be involved right now. Well, well, well. See, in the family dynamic too, and I have to agree with the Marcus more so. The family dynamic more more so is like I have this big family, right? They're expanding. Uh, my cousin is married or. Baby daddy's this guy. He's influencing her, seeing what's going on. Right, in the family okay, listen, we are all see because right now, and I, I hate mm -hmm. to say this to you and Marcus, mm -hmm. I love y'all both to death, mm -hmm. but we gotta get out of the low Free. level Free. thinking. Gotcha, gotcha. Because we are. That's why we keep stopping ourselves. Mm -hmm. I would, but because. On the other hand, I love y'all, but mm. I got to say this. On the other hand, y'all talking about the family members who ain't going to do this, that. But mm. y'all the main one coming up with all the reasons. So <laughs> at some point in time, point. we, I'm just saying Good at some point, point in time, we got to stop doing that. Mm. We got to get, we got to just get past it. Well, we know. Okay. I, I can think of a couple family members who, who ain't going to act right in mind. All right, we're going to ride it up to where you don't get to control the money. Right. And if you get to acting up, then you would just go and, you know, we're going to buy you out. Yeah, ride you it out. up that way, like an agreement, like you would do anywhere else. Well, when me and Tay get married, uh, there you go. we got our money together. Speaking into existence. And whatever Tay That's says, right. Shit, y'all can buy up the whole neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talking that's, about. What that's what I'm saying. And uh, and so Lavinia says, true about Asians. I work in escrow. And sometimes we get 22 checks from families for the deposit. Yeah. Now I see that twenty two <laughs> checks, but they make it a uh, deposit. Right, 200, 200, 200, 150, 150, two hundred, two hundred, one fifty, one fifty. But they're yeah. working together for a common goal of domination. Nation. And we talk about Auntie Whoopty Whoop mm -hmm. ain't gonna want to act right, mm -hmm. but they got twenty two checks buying up a property but, somewhere. But Auntie Whoop Doo got her two kids, Ray Ray and Pookie, sitting up on the uh, counter. That's she fine. Put... But we ride it all up. Auntie Whoop Doo will be wanting in on this coalition. We got, mm -hmm. yes, I do. All right. Okay, what we going to do is ride it up like this and mm -hmm. the uncle and the Ray Ray and the Pookies and all. Mm -hmm. they, like, we're right. smarter than that. We are dumbing ourselves down. Gotcha. I we gotcha. are. We like, come on. You got 11 goddamn degrees. Yes. You can't figure out how to get past with Auntie Wooly Oh, Wooly wait, Wooly. wait. You know I know how to do it. Right. You know I know Marcus, how to do it. Marcus, you smart. You can't get past, you know, Ray Ray and Pookie and Auntie Whoop -de Whoop and Uncle, you know, uh, Tay Tay <laughs> as Donovan. You can't get past them. Of course. <laughs> Tay Tay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm asking some questions. And Lavinia says, I, agree, I disagree with the premise that... Um, it's a renter's market. We have no power. Yeah. We live in California where there ain't no rent control. Well, right. most of it is not. Yeah, most no of it is No rent not. control. You can have your landlord one day raising uh, well, no, one. No, Prop 13 applies to homes. So right. the, uh, apartments and stuff, yeah. condos, there's no but rent But so control. you're renting a house or whatever. The, 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 the landlord's nothing stopping the landlord from rent, raising your rent to mm -hmm. whatever they want. Because they're like, where you going to go? Whatever happened to the rent's too high party? I mean, yeah, this dude in New York, he said the rent is too damn high party. I'd have voted for him all day long if he was out here. Like, for real. And uh, let's see. Uh, Marcus says, how about investing with like-minded strangers from the start to finish on a project that is successful? Then go back to your family and say, look what I did um, mm -hmm. without you. I know what the black family, uh, let's see, what the black family people are. Uh, give me proof first, people, but see... We got to get past that. I'm not, if that's how you think, because I, like I said, I got people in my family who think like that too, mm -hmm. but we just got to get good at having conversations. Do you always want to not have nothing? I mean, of course, you might <laughs> say it in a different way. Do you always want to be struggling? Do you always want to be trying to figure out how you're going to pay your rent and your mortgage? Do you always want to be coming to me borrowing money? Or do you want to figure out a way to where we can get up and run in and we can have money coming Make in? Make our money, then go our separate Right, ways. so you, why you got all this, well, I don't know about it, I don't trust you and all this, I'm mm -hmm. to do it. Why are you doing all that? We're going to be building, so we would rather build with you. But if you're going to have your negativity, stay over there. Pay the man rent and be going to check in the cash and figure out how I'm just <laughs> saying. And Damn. figure out how you're going to pay your bills. Have a repo man coming to look for you every 30 days or mm -hmm. how because you, you, you hiding the car. Because you're three months <laughs> behind. 
You go and do all of that with your low level thinking, but right now we are building. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to start talking to some of these people. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I know not to have a conversation with some people in my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and Lavia says, uh, family dynamics is life's greatest mystery. Yeah, it, it, it is. is. And, and it's not perfect. Especially when you got the outside family members coming in. Yeah. And the in -laws, but, so. Right. But start with your immediate family. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're not the hell you talking about because you already do that. What? You guys in Bass. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're, what we're are you talking about? We're intertwined. But that was, we're, we're a small group. It hasn't expanded to right. the family. But, but I'm saying it's yeah. doable. It's doable. It's yeah. doable. It is. You know? but, and I, I'm going to tell you what, why it's going to be doable. you got to have a strong, central matriarch or patriarch or somebody that is going to be the center right. and that strength. You don't have that in your family and, and everybody, Tay Tay and Deontay and <laughs> Aunt Shirley and all them just running the streets. It's not going to work. Right, okay. Well, you got to have somebody there that is loving. I, I agree with you 100%. And Lavinia says only three cities in LA County have rent control. So mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Primarily, yeah. California is doesn't have rent control. Right. I think San Francisco has some sort of it's laws. Just, yeah. But they, no, no, they're no. getting around no, 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 them. No. Yeah, what it is is the law is, especially San Francisco, Act. is they they can raise the rent, but only by so many percentage. And, and, then that, yeah. and I think the Ellis Act, if I'm not mistaken, is you can't, because that's what they're doing mm -hmm. in San Francisco. They're selling the properties because the tech industry is yeah. moving in. So what they're doing is they're not supposed to be able to sell the property um, to, I guess, to turn around and rent it for right. hire. So they're not supposed right. to be able to kick you out, out. Right. in order to sell it or rent right. it for more money. But they can't money. raise the rent, but only by so many percent. But they're finding loopholes around yeah. that to do right. that. Yeah. And so Marcus says, Demetri K, are you doing any group investments with your family right now? And if so, how is it going? If not, what are you waiting on? Laugh out loud. Yes. Wow, I practice what I preach. As I said, <laughs> my daughter and I are looking into buying some property as we speak. So that's just my immediate family. Also, her father has a business which he's yes. getting ready to let it go, and so what? I'm gonna yes, I'm gonna sit down with him. Her father and I are together, obviously, but I'm getting I want to talk to him and see if he'll let us acquire. It's a pretty good business, yeah. right? So, so yes, I might be interested in that. See it? See what I'm saying? So yes, I, I walk the talk. I'm not one of those people who you know sit up and say, "Wow, no, absolutely." Yeah, you I, point out the disc, and, and I have my I, and just to be a little bit more transparent with you, my family has an investment background. Like my, yeah. I have, I come from a I'm a family of investors who have mm -hmm. the knowledge, and so no, absolutely. Uh, my brother, um, and my oldest brother, he uh, is a financial guru. Yep. Um, and he has just started another company, but I've always invested with him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always. Whether it was real estate, life insurance, whatever. Mm -hmm. I've always, 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 always. And so, yes, I am walking the talk. Um, and let's see. And Lavinia says, they sell property in San Francisco by the square millimeter. Yes. I yes. Was oh, my God. It was a, it was a little bitty <laughs> yeah. space. They were selling for a $700,000. Yeah. And they said they had people lined up all mm -hmm. over trying to get it. Because mm -hmm. there's no, like, that was considered affordable. Yes. I'm like, huh? Yeah. It was, it was almost like the size of a dumpster. Right. And yeah. she said that she had, like, a line. Her appointment book is just yeah. always booked with people. Who want, so she's waiting for the highest bidder. Exactly. Probably somebody going to come in with cash and just mm -hmm. buy it, right. you know? Right. Um, and then you also say, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. And then Al says, I'm going to open up a business. I, said, I got to read Al's comments because he'd be <laughs> acting up. So he says, I'm going to open up a business, a state-of-the-art rec center with TVs, phones, tablet, magazines, chicken dinners, and candy bars for those who got <laughs> and black mothers, especially like mine. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a black business. That's it. We, we, you know what? How Mom, successful would that be? The thing about sales and making money is find a need and fill it. Fill it. Mm -hmm. Find what people want and get them what they want. So to your point, like you're joking, but imagine if you had a hub for older black women to go and spend money and talk and do whatever the case is and everybody's making money. See, you think you're joking all the time, but somebody is going to do just mm -hmm. that. Have a social club like they used to do, mm -hmm. you know? So there you go. Get it started, Al. Go, go ahead. <laughs> and Erica says, uh, she's replying to Marcus. So, Marcus, what's up with collab on the duplex, triplex, or fourplex? Well, there we go. Challenge. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. <laughs> Mark says, I would encourage a segment of land. Uh, I would encourage a segment on land um, showing the, oops, let's see, showing the basic principles of how to do safely with people you know. You'd be surprised 
um, how many vowels, and I don't know that you would get. So um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that meant, but I mean, it sounds like it said buy land. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, and Al says pull over and gas up because you missed some more comments. No, I didn't miss your comment. I saw exactly what you said, and I chose not to read it because it was a little <laughs> bit on the vulgar side. I saw it. So anyway, um, how much time we got? You got about... Uh... A minute, two minutes on the okay, podcast. Okay, so on the podcast, really quick before I lose you guys. Thank you guys so for, so much for being here. I wanted to talk about Nipsey's parents really quick, and I wanted to say big ups to his mom. And really, this is kind of saying something good about his dad now. What? A father gets props? Yes. And during the service, the uh, the mother alluded, or this she didn't allude, she said that the, uh, her and, uh, and Nipsey and Sam's uh, dad are divorced for mm -hmm. various reasons. I won't get into, but yeah, they're divorced. Young folks, yeah. But she... I didn't let her feelings for the father get in the way of him raising, raising his, son. his sons. And it turns out that he raised some good sons. Not that they get in a little gang props mm -hmm. here. And there. Yeah, sure, you know. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he raised these uh, men to be men. And so as I was listening to her, because her whole testimony was just awesome. I mean, it went on forever. And I understood she probably, you know, internally was grieving, probably just wanted mm -hmm. to say all she could about right. her son. But just like... This lady was so woke. And I know we use that word a lot, but she was just talking about praying to the ancestors and, you know, he's not, you know, dead and gone per se. He's, you know, morphed into energy because we all come from energy. Um, you know, it's just, you could tell that she's done a lot of studying and she knows who she is. Yeah, and in turn, special. she's taught her children to know who they are. And so... Isn't that another show? <laughs> it is, yeah. but... Yeah. I, I just... I just, I was like, wow. No, because, uh, you know, if, if more black women would be like this woman here and teaching them right versus the bullshit, I think we would be a lot farther than where we're at. We just need to get back to that. Yes. Because that's the stuff we used to do. We used to, you know, enlighten our children and teach our... And a lot of us still do, so I don't want to say mm -hmm. we don't, but... We had more of that. And Lavinia said his mother killed me during a funeral. Yes, she yeah. was just, she was awesome. Yeah. You know, just just the whole, like you can understand where Nipsey got a lot of who he um, was from. His mom, very enlightened. Um, just seemed like a really good person to be around and to sit and to learn from. And so it's just, I, I thought about that. I was like, wow. You know, and then his dad was an awesome individual too, or mm -hmm. is an awesome individual um, I remember Snoop saying, you know, how he uh, noticed the father would teach them and, you know, learn. they learned a whole lot of things from him. And Snoop also said, now you have another son and me and things like that. And so um, I just thought about that in regards to the mom that she didn't get in the way. She allowed, I mean, he took the kids, you know, back to the, uh, uh, Nipsey and his brother back to Africa like three mm -hmm. times. Just really raised them to be men. And so <clears throat> it would be awesome if we can start that family dynamic again. Hey, if we don't make it, that don't mean we got to block each other. Um, For example, it sounds like Nas is taking Khalees, or actually Khalees is going on trial because she's denied him seeing his son oh, yeah. Consent. 20 consent. times. Yeah. So she's got to answer for that. But it's like, why are you stopping this man from seeing his son? They're like, mm -hmm. you mad because y'all not together saying about you no more. And so it's awesome to see when moms, um, you know, obviously Nipsey's mom's a little older, but... You know, we need to get back to that. We didn't get along, but that don't mean right. we can't, you know. Yeah, what do the kids have to do with it? That's a separate right. entity. Okay, so let me get to this because let's see. Um, and you also say, Lavinia, that she's a deeply spiritual woman. No, absolutely. And Gloria says, question for you both. Starting from zero, how can a person working a 40-hour job get themselves fin uh, financially independent through investment opportunities in what amount of time? Well, if they're working a 40-hour job, unless he's starting from zero, well, first, you got to get, as I said, you got to get yourself stable. Get your finances and stuff together. Uh, figure out uh, if you're spending a lot of money um, or wasting a lot right. of first money. First thing you want to cut the fat. Cut the fat. If first you're spending thing. and wasting a lot of money, stop doing that. And I know it's hard to just, some people can do it cold turkey. But you'll find how much money you actually right. have. Right. Sit down. And maybe for 30, um, 30 days back, go through your bank statement. Because me, I use my card more, majority of mm -hmm. time. I rarely use cash. And go and see what where the majority of your money went. Did you eat out 
30 times, yeah, you know, um, that month to yeah, the tune of uh, three, four hundred dollars. That's yeah. an investment. Um, a, good, right a, good, a, a good app to use would be mint.com by intuitive. Mint.com. Yeah. Okay. It, it, uh, it does a, your whole budget, your, uh, any research, your car gives you the value of your car, your property. It tells you if you put your bank into it, it'll, it'll do everything and put right. it all together. Right. It's so awesome. I don't know why I'm freezing up a little bit Good. here, but yeah, mm -hmm. cut the fat. Mm -hmm. First, figure out because a lot of people who are working 40 hours and don't have a lot of um, leftover money. It's I don't want to say always, but it probably does have a lot to do with you know miscellaneous spending that they don't want, mm -hmm. uh, that they don't need. I don't know why I'm freezing up, but um, it's gonna hurt a little bit to stop doing those things. If you're right. used to buying two, three, four pair of shoes a month, Starbucks, buy one. you know, uh, three times a day. Stay out of Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Go one day a week. I mean, right. ain't no damn coffee that good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah, don't think, you, you, you know. You go to movies every weekend. You got to kind of cut back. It's going to be painful, yeah. but in the long run. Start there. Yeah. Start there first because you can't invest if you're trying to figure right. out how to pay the light right. bill. And investing is a long-term game. Uh, but what happens if you can't pay your light bill, but you're investing? You're going to withdraw that money. Right. And right. then you're going to end up paying some tax penalties and yeah, all those exactly. other stuff. Um, there's another app that we use, which is uh, we recommend. There's a bunch of them, but one that we use is Stash. $5 a week on one um, yeah. stock. I mean, right. You start there. And, you know, Stash is a good app as well. Yeah. And Lavinia says, never get coffee at Starbucks. Do your own nails. Eat at home. Yes, there start there. Because yeah. a lot of us... Spend a, you'd be surprised how much money we spend. We just, waste, and not we spend, waste, we right? waste. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I like, well, spending is also called kind of a bad term to use because when you spend it means you don't get it back. Right. So you want to invest, invest. it. Right. right. So a lot of us um, spend the money and don't have anything to show for it, like the coffee is right. drinking and it's Cigarettes. gone. Cigarettes. or whatever. So mm -hmm. start there. First, do you want to know one of the, the the one things that everybody and I, I would say just about everybody spends money on and they don't need to and they can right. save money? Bottle of water. Bottle. Oh yeah, yeah. Get you a filter. Yeah, you have a, a refrigerator that that gives you water and you won't. Yeah, use get a it, filter. You know, so. And Gloria says, I mean to say, what type of investments can I make to secure a fair income that can get me out marijuana of the stock? MJ <laughs> on the stock she market. She said to get her out of the workplace. And based on your knowledge, Donovan, how fast can that be done realistically? How much money do you have to invest? That's the first question. You've got to cut the fat first and see what you're working with. Right. See what you're working with. How much money can, can you... F figure that out for, for me first. Send me an email. You don't have to tell me exactly what it is, but give me a round number. Right. Defense industry stocks. What right now is a... A stock that is going up and it is hot on the uh, 100 and it just blew up even more because of Saturday. You're going to see it blow up Monday, tomorrow. Right. And another one you can do is something as simple as um, a life insurance policy that has cash value that will allow you to um, build cash value. It's serving two purposes. One, it'll protect against the, um, a death in case you die. Right. It'll um, protect your loved one from mm -hmm. financial harm. Hardship. Also, mm -hmm. you're building cash value that you can use after a while, depending on how much you've invested in You can buy a property and do a whole host of other things. So life insurance is one way uh, to start doing that. Hot stock tip. I'm going to say it because it just, it just broke down Saturday. You're going to see that stock go up at least 30% tomorrow. Disney stock. Why? Star Wars Episode Nine just premiered. But how much is Disney stock, though? One hundred twenty-eight dollars. A stock. A stock. Right. That's what I'm saying. But if right. you get on it right now, you let's right. say she has a couple of thousand. Right. True. That's a hot stock. True. Okay. And then Lavinia says, "Don't invest in um, in any Trump crap." <laughs> <laughs> Trump doesn't have any investments. And then she says, "I love Goodwill Salvation Army." Yes, mm -hmm. that's a viable option yes. to go buy clothes yeah. from. Um, if you like my daughter, she repurposes the clothes. She goes to more modern so yeah you can do things like mm -hmm. that and um um orlandis says a hundred dollars a week right now i can invest so you know man you got maybe Ford. 150 okay you got ford stock right now that's selling at less than ten dollars uh, a thing sprint stock which is getting ready to merge with uh uh t-mobile T -Mobile. that's less than that's less than six dollars a stock um ge general electric Stock. I mean, there, there's so much. I mean, right. precious metals, $28 a stock. And Lavinia also says, look into um, a Roth IRA. Yeah, but there's penalties with that because you got to keep I'm it I'm going to tell so you, when I was about 23. Oh, that was five years ago. Yeah. When I was 23, <laughs> I came into a big lump sum of money. It was mm -hmm. huge. For a 23-year-old, it was huge. Yeah. So my mom took me to her investment banker. 
and she sat down with me and I said, I want to invest this money. Now, the greedy part of her could say, yeah, sure, come on, give it all to mm -hmm. me. But she says, is this money you're going to need? Right. If this is money you're going to need, don't, don't invest, invest it. it. Correct. Invest some and then go, for my words, go trick off <laughs> the rest. Because what happens is when you invest all of that money into something like a Roth IRA, life insurance policy, whatever, you um, early withdraw, then you get penalties. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit you. Hit yeah, you so make sure it's money you don't need, money that you can tie up. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, throwing but it the out. the thing is if you, if you last the long part and you get to withdraw it, the, you know, the rewards are worth it, you know, if you, but you can't go against it. That's the problem. And then Al says, how about um, your, what is best for a new phone so they won't keep interrupting the show with the buffering? This is actually not my phone that um, yeah. I just use for the show. It doesn't have any phone service. So I don't know why it was doing that. Yeah. Um, and so Arson says, apparently it is said, namely in a book I read that in life, the biggest changes and results are due to a bunch of small changes. Mm -hmm. And just like the small positive adjustments make the greatest um, changes apparently the same small bad habits will destroy you and you won't even know it. Yes. Laugh out loud. Absolutely. Yeah. Just start small. But but if you want a guaranteed stock, uh, look up the marijuana stock, MJ, on the uh, stock market. You can get that for like $38. Mm -hmm. And it keeps going up because it's just a matter of time before the federal government approves right. and they what's don't going get in on. on it. Right. right. It's at $32 right now. So if you can suck that up, man. And Lavinia said the kind of rock um, where you put in once a month. Okay, well, that's like your retirement, Roth. Like, I have right. one, and I just throw money in there. I, I put $20 a week, which comes up to, like, let's say $80 mm -hmm. a month. Uh, by the time I reach retirement age, which I'm already, which is, I guess, retirement age you is 60. You already retired. Yeah, what, let's say 60-something. Just that little money that I'm putting in, of course, I'm not going to touch it because I, I, I could care less. That's going to be at least forty-seven, minimum of forty-seven thousand dollars, just sitting there that I can just take and do something. By the time you have your boo thing, and she'll just right. check it off. Tax free, and, hey, you know. it'll be tax free. I can pull it out. I'm good. And then Al says, "Tell them what my family member did with some money being greedy in their four hundred one k. I think they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, took somebody else's money that they got from a life insurance, stole it from the rest of the family, invested it, and yeah, lost it, or something lost crazy. It. Oh man! But yeah, so anyway, um, I don't see any more of you guys' comments. You guys are so." Um, I'll read them as we get out of here. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Donovan, yes, thank for doing you. this. To, um, all the production you got going on. And thank you, Marcus, for spreading the message. Yes, Marcus. Um, it's I, I'm with like, Marcus, though. Yeah. Family, forget that. Y'all two gooches. Y'all the gooch. <laughs> yeah, Marcus and Donovan the gooch at the family uh, meeting. Come on, I don't know about all that. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Pookie and them yeah. are always trying to steal mm -hmm. the money. Yeah. You, you, everybody at the table talking about, okay, let's put our money on the table. Three of them ain't got their money, but they over here ready to eat. What had happened was, <laughs> y'all spot me, spot me, I got yeah. you though. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you figure it out. Figure out the family dynamics of how you make that happen, um, and it, it, it'll work out. And Levine said, that was great. This was great. No, thank yeah. you so much. You guys make it but great. But the key to it is what D says all the time. You got to start where you start are. Start where you are. If it's a dollar, it's like dollar. I have a jar, a, a big a jar once a year, I fill it up, mm -hmm. and then I cash it cash out. Cash it in. And, and then how much is it? It's over 100 some dollars. Yeah, it's over 100 some dollars, depending on what, if it's the, the, the silver or right. the, 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 the pennies or but, whatever. But that's just money that was pocket change that you wouldn't have thought Right, about. exactly. And I don't, I don't spend my change. So anyway, you guys, we are out of here. Thank you so much yes, for joining us. We will be back next week. I think next week is Easter. Yeah. I don't know if you guys want us to be on here on Easter. I don't celebrate Easter, but if you guys want to be here... We'll be here too, yep. right? So anyway, if you guys have any more questions, comments, or concerns, please hit me up and I will do the research and we will talk about it. Again, let's not let Nipsey's legacy go by the wayside. Let's not I love let you, Nipsey. Nipsey's um, legacy, the things he was trying to do, be a fad or a trending topic. Let's keep his legacy keep alive as we would try to keep Marcus Garvey's and Everybody in between that tried yeah. to uh, orchestrate the blueprint. And I'll read these last comments before we leave. Shout out to my big brother. Um, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, Patricia, what's happening? It says, thank you for the inspiring replying to Marcus. Uh, uh, thank you for the uh, inspiring conversation. And Al says, just got my first payment notification for the season tickets. Y'all spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know where Al's invested. <laughs> right. And Gloria says, family. Oops. Family. Uh, it's dangerous because we all know each other's background. There will yes. definitely come a time where one will say 
Y'all can't put money together for me. I'm short this week. Boom, the breakdown. Well, we just got to mm -hmm. have that conversation. We're right. just, you know, we are all, we're probably the ones, since we are here, the ones that's good at having that conversation. We just need to have that conversation and say, ain't going to be no... I, I, Tom Foolery. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Foolery. Yeah. Levine says, "Rest in peace, to Nipsey." Yes. yes. And uh, Arson says, "Okay, I will be inboxing you, Demetri K. Please do, all right?" Mm -hmm. And Arson says, "For a subject for next week, yay!" Because yes. I hate to think about stuff. Marijuana so stock. Get Marijuana on it. stocks. Get on it. All right, y'all. So see y'all next week again. Let's keep uh, Nipsey's hu Nip Nipsey's hustle alive. Yes. All right. Peace. Peace.